the March 7th meeting of the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission is being called to order at 6.30 p.m. We will now have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Brousseau. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we will now move on to section three of our meeting, and we will have roll call led by staff coordinator Francine Spriegel. Thank you. Commissioner Boyajan? Here. Commissioner Brignardello? Here. Commissioner Brousseau? Here. Commissioner Culhep is absent. Commissioner Lee? Here. Commissioner Leone? Here. Commissioner George McGuigan? Here. Commissioner Jeb McGuigan? Here. Commissioner Ramirez Davis? Here. Commissioner Rhodes? Here. Commissioner Sklavnizis? Here. Commissioner Stein? Here. Commissioner Tio de Rescue? Here. Adult Commissioner Dalbandian? Here. And Adult Commissioner Petrus? Here. Thank you. We will now move on to section four, the public comment section of our meeting. Commissioner Scavanitis, will you please introduce the public comments? Thank you, Commissioner Rose. This is the time in our meeting when we invite members of the public to state their concerns about youth-related issues in our city or to present items for commission consideration. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak at this time? There being none, let's move on. Commissioner Rose. Thank you, Commissioner Scavanitis. We will now move on to the guest speaker portion of our meeting. That's section five. Commissioner, Gab Commissioner Brignardello, will you please introduce the, the uh, guest speaker portion of our meeting? Thank you, Vice Chair Rose. Tonight we have a guest speaker from the Greater, Greater Conejo Valley Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Jill Letterer, President and CEO. Jill Letterer has, is a 28-year resident of Ventura County, and since Jill has been uh, President and CEO, the Chamber has added a third Contract City, one of the only few chambers to do so, added technology and manufacturer forums, and hired dynamic, highly educated staff members to carry out the mission of the chamber. Last year, the chamber became one of the only five chambers in the state of uh, California to achieve the elite five-star accreditation from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, placing it in the top 1% of more than 7,400 chambers of commerce in the United States. So please help me welcome Ms. Jill Letterer. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Youth Commissioners. Thank you for inviting me. I'm delighted to be here. I'm so impressed with how professional and how organized you all are. And um, I'm delighted to share some information with you about the Greater Conejo Valley Chamber of Commerce. The Greater Conejo Valley Chamber of Commerce is a member-driven, professionally staffed nonprofit organization dedicated to supporting the region's business community. We have received, um, as the Commissioner said earlier, the highest accreditation available to Chambers of Commerce nationally. Um, this is a picture of our chairman, our former Chairman of the Board, Phil Kuntz. Our Chairman um, serve a year each, and me, with our five-star accreditation. As you can tell, we were very excited and very happy. Um, fewer than 1% of the 7,000 Chambers of Commerce nationwide have achieved a five-star accreditation. And we're one of only five Chambers in the state of California with a five-star accreditation. And that's out of about 600 chambers in our state. Your chamber has also won the President's Circle Award from the California Chamber for three years in a row. And the purpose of that is to recognize excellence in business advocacy. Our service area, we are one of the largest chambers in the Tri-County area, uh, which includes Los Angeles, Ventura, and Santa Barbara. We have over 1,200 extremely active members of all sized businesses. Our chamber focuses on six core competencies. They are building a strong local economy, promoting the community, providing access and referral opportunities, representing the interests of business with government, taking political action, and of course supporting a sustainable future. One of the things we do to support a strong local economy is we provide counseling for new businesses and businesses that are having difficulties free of charge. Um, this is done by the Service Corps of Retired Executives, or SCORE, and it's a great business network. Um, they do breakfasts and mixers, and they provide counseling every Friday at the Chamber of Commerce. 
one of our really fun events, and in fact, our signature event is called Taste of Conejo, where more than 120 local businesses participate, over 1,300 guests, and we're, we're expecting probably close to 2,000 this coming year in September. There's live entertainment, there was a fashion show, and we're looking forward to September 27th, 2012 at the Four Seasons, and we hope everybody will join us for that. And you can always check out our website for more information as well. Providing a strong local economy is the true north of any Chamber of Commerce. Buy Conejo is our signature program, and it's designed to promote local retailers and to educate people on the benefits of buying local. We launched this business website in 2011. Um, you can also access it as a link from the city website or from the Chamber of Commerce website as well. Another thing that we do is we provide membership discounts. Our chamber is one of the only ones nationwide that has an attorney affinity program. And of course, you never want to have to contact an attorney, but in life it, it does come to, you know, to all of us at some point or another. And our chamber has partnered with the Ventura County Bar Association to provide a discount in legal services for our chamber members. We also partner with the Ventura County Star and with the Acorn on newspaper advertising, Office Depot for discounted supplies for our members and um, discounts on chamber functions and international travel. And coming up this fall, we're taking an international chamber trip to Ireland, which is going to be very interesting. We've been to China twice, um, Italy once, Croatia once, and uh, Spain last year as well. Um, providing education is a key component of what the Chamber does. We have a small business symposium coming up April 5th at the Pepperdine University Graduate Campus um, over in Thousand Oaks off Townsgate Road. We have many, many, over 75 a year um, lunchtime lunch and learn programs that are free to chamber members and only $10 for non-members, ranging from search engine optimization to how to use all the great features on your iPhone, uh, what the new health insurance laws mean, so th there's a pretty wide variety. We promote this great community we live in. Our city manager, Scott Mitnick, says the pre premier city um, has premier employees, and that is so true, and we are all very fortunate to be living in this premier community. We have a chamber foundation. It's the 501c3 arm of the Greater Conejo Chamber of Commerce. We provide scholarships to graduating high school students who are planning to go on to college. We provide grants to local charities, such as Conejo Youth Employment Service, represented here by Leanne. We have a great Teacher of the Month program, Spirit of Community Awards, coming up at Baxter Healthcare in May that we're very excited about, and, um, of course, Teacher of the Year as well. Leadership Conejo is a highly prestigious leadership program now in its ninth year, and it promotes and enhances leadership in the Conejo Valley. And it educates local business professionals and people who might be new to the community to all the things that, that we do here in Thousand Oaks. We've been to the wastewater treatment plant, the archives of the library, uh, the inner workings of the city. Um, we've done great tours uh, at Conejo Park and Rec. So that, that is a lot of fun, and it's a nine-month program. We promote the community. We've got lots of different promotional opportunities. The Chamber is all about helping businesses brand themselves. We have a weekly e-newsletter. Um, it goes out every Tuesday and has a distribution of over 2,000. We have a monthly newsletter, and I've left some of them for you over there as well, that has a hard copy distribution of 4,000, in which we also publish online. And we also have an annual printed membership directory, um, and as well our online directory. Our Chamber website receives over 150,000 page views per month. So it, it's a pretty busy Chamber website. We also offer a full membership directory, links to the three city websites, and a calendar of events online, and the ability for anybody to register for these events online. We have monthly chamber events in addition to our big one-off events. We have networking groups, um, six of them for one-on-one -on -one contact opportunities and collaboration, business referrals by phone and email. Our chamber makes over 2,000 referral contacts each month. Am I, am I running long? No, okay. <laughs> Let me know if I'm running too long because I have lots of information here. Um, Referrals, uh, we've got lots of great committees. Our ambassadors are wonderful professionals who go to all the ribbon cuttings. We've got governmental relations because access to our business and, and um, political leaders is so important. An education committee, human resources, and our recently added manufacturing and technology forums.
The Government Relations Committee works to improve the regulatory environment. Um, you have all probably heard from your parents about workers' comp regulations, about state income tax, all the, all the things that make running and owning a, a business very difficult um, in the state of California. And we try to alert our members to pending legislation that affects the economy and may potentially affect their business. We host local community leaders and politicians on current topics each month. Um, right there is Jim Friedel, who's um, the director of Caneo Park and Rec, John Brooks from our own city of Thousand Oaks Green Department, and Ryan Van Omeren, who's a senior uh, vice president over at Cal Lutheran. We've been to Washington, D.C. There we are. Uh, we, you go there, and you, you very much hope to make a difference. And I, I encourage all of you to, to pay attention to the elections and to um, encourage people you know who are el eligible to vote in November. And, of course, providing a sustainable future. Um, the Chamber is in the process of getting our green certification. We want to lead the way for the other businesses um, in the community to do the same. And we do provide practical assistance, such as on-site on shredding services, for a highly discounted cost. Our board of directors is amazing. Our chamber has a 30-member volunteer board of directors elected from the full membership at large, and there, there are many of them. They represent large businesses like Amgen, Baxter, Dole, small businesses like Phone on Hold Marketing, CR Print, universities like Pepperdine and, and our amazing Cal Lutheran, uh, real estate brokers, the Oaks Mall is represented, and as you can see, all different generations of board members and business professionals ranging from their 30s into their 70s. Chamber staff. Our chamber is so fortunate. We've got a large office building on the corner of Hampshire and Townsgate Road. You are all welcome at any time. We have a nine-member professional paid staff there to help our members in whatever way they need. And there we all are. And thank you so much for your kind attention. I'm available to answer any questions should you have any. I have a couple of questions. Um, first, you mentioned some scholarships offered to graduating students. Um, how does one go about attaining one of those scholarships? That's a great question. Um, at any of your guidance counselor's offices, at any of the six high schools in the area, you can pick up the application. We also have them downloadable on our website. And um, if you have any difficulty access accessing any of that, I've left a stack of my business cards over there. So just reach out to me via email, and I'll shoot you one over. Wonderful, thank you. Mm -hmm. And also, are there any internships or volunteer opportunities available um, for teens like us? Yes, uh, that's a great question, and we just lost uh, one of our wonderful interns. We love interns. Um, we just lost um, Brad Ujima from Cal Lutheran um, because he, he got a full-time paying job, and we're so happy for him, and he did a wonderful job. But there again, yes, if you know of anybody who's looking for an internship, just um, shoot me their resume or, or some basic information and uh, we appreciate the help very much and we love to do that. Yeah. Do you have an age requirement for those internships? We do not. Um, no, uh, we prefer high school or college, but uh, there, there's no minimum age requirement. Uh, two questions. Um, so for the scholarships you mentioned, are those available for just uh, school, uh, students who attend pub the public schools? Or Oh, so they're, they're just public. currently it's just for um, for kids in the public high schools. Okay, right. and then uh, my second question was uh, for the referrals that you were talking about. How would one go about um, like just getting a referral or? that kind of thing. All you have to do, if, if you're looking for um, a great dry cleaner or a great, well, you wouldn't be looking for a winery, right? But if your parents were, all you have to do is call the chamber or check out our website and you, you can, you know, email us a question or, or you can call directly. We've got, you'll get a live person. We have a wonderful community coordinator, Barbara Brown. We do um, only refer our members. So that's one of the benefits of being a member of the Chamber of Commerce. And usually we'll give you two or three different referrals so you can check out, you know, is this the insurance agent for you or is this where I want to buy my car? We like to give you a few options. And then I have one more. How old do you have to be to be a member? Uh, there is no age requirement. Okay. And we do actually have retired people and we do have very young people. Um, although I, I don't know if we have any high school students who are members of the chamber, but uh, we, we welcome uh, what we call a civic membership.
for students interested in business, do you hold, is there like a special event one day of the year, or can they come to when the speakers, when they come to your meetings, can they attend those? How does one go about learning more about business? Absolutely. You are most welcome to attend our committee meetings and our lunch and learns. We are starting a young professionals group this year, uh, which we're very excited about. It's been in our strategic plan for quite a while, and we're really looking forward to rolling it out. And I think that that's going to have some, um, you know, some terrific options for people who are not yet quite professionals, who are still a little bit younger than that, but, you know, people of your age to, um, you know, to kind of bring you into the loop as to what's going on in business. All right. Well, thank you so very, very much for taking the time out of your schedule to come here and uh, have us all learn more about the Chamber of Commerce. So I really appreciate it. A pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Commissioner Gab Frignardello and Miss Letterer for coming in and speaking to us one more time. Um, next, we'll move on to Section 6 of our meeting. Commissioner Lee, would you please introduce the School and Liaison Reports section? Of course. All right. So in addition to being an advisory board to City Council, the Youth Commission also appoints commissioners to act as liaisons to various youth organizations. One of these organizations is the Teen Center Advisory Committee. Well, Commissioner Titorescu, please introduce this portion of the meeting. So for the Teen Center, a recap of this past month, on Saturday, February 4th, we hosted our annual Parent Teen Pool Tournament. 17 teams and 34 participants played. Also on Saturday the 4th, uh, 30 high school age boys came out for the first evaluation for High School Hoops League. Saturday, February 11th, over 800 teens attended the annual Valentine Valentine's Day Dance. This is always one of the biggest dances of the year. Friday, February 17th, this was a school holiday. We took a bus up to Mountain High for a snowboard trip. The trip filled with 35 teens. February 18th, Pete conducted a video workshop to assist teens that will be participating in the video festival. Ten teens attended. On the 25th, Dan held his second high school hoops evaluation. Over 70 boys attended. The program has just under 100 boys registered at this time. Now for upcoming activities. First off, spring program registration is now taking place. For programs info, please go to thousandnoxteencenter.com or like us on Facebook. This Thursday, March 8th, is the annual Senior vs. Teen Pool Tournament at the Senior Center. This program is from 5 to 8 p.m. and includes chili dogs. The teens are always faced with a big challenge since the seniors have an age advantage. Then, on March 10th, we'll host our Spring E-Way Stay at the Teen Center from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. All, small, all small electronics are welcome. Saturday, March 17th, is the 7th and 8th grade St. Patrick's Day Dance from 7 to 10 p.m. The middle school girls soccer tournament will be held on three dates, two of which will fall in March, the 14th and the 28th. The program is conducted at Caneo Creek South. All five public middle schools participate. For spring break, we have two exciting trips. The first is a tall ship cruise out of Channel Islands Harbor on Tuesday, March 20th from 12 to 5 p.m. The fee is $45. Then on Saturday, March 24th from 11 to 9 p.m., 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., for $35, you can enjoy a day at Magic Mountain. Don't wait. Register now. The activities all sell out. Finally, just last night, 12 of us met to plan a high school concert scheduled for April 27th. We are in the process of selecting local talent for the show. If you are a high school age band or artist and would like to perform, please contact Jules at the Teen Center. The number is 494-5156. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tita Rescue. Now, Commissioner uh, McGuigan, will you please introduce the ASB-ASG portion of our meeting? All right, so this is the uh, part of our meeting where we invite uh, representatives from the high schools and middle schools to come up and talk about uh, basically what's been going on at their schools and what's coming up. So first we'll begin off with, uh, begin with the uh, middle schools. So will Nikhil and Zachary from Sequoia Middle School please come up to the podium. Okay, so Sequoia is coming off many successful fundraisers. Um, we just finished our mana drive. We collected over 1,000 items that people donated. Also recently ended was our fundraiser Teens for Jeans, which we collected over 600 jeans. This coming Thursday and Friday we have our slam dunk contest. Students with the best or most stylish duck win duck duck dunk win 15 whole dollars <laughs> sticking with the basketball team 
On Friday, this Friday, we have March Madness. Students can come to watch teachers face off against other teachers. Also this Friday, ASB has a CATA field trip to Westlake High School, um, so that should be insightful. Uh, coming up, we have a thing that we are doing called musical trash cans. Students can throw their trash into a can with their favorite genre of music on it, and the can with the most trash will get its genre played at the next fun Friday. And we have um, our event called WOW. It's Worker of the Week. It's a program where ASB acknowledges a staff member every few weeks for their hard work. Hints are given over intercom, over the intercom, and students can try to guess their teacher for a chance at winning an iPod shuffle. We are selling birthday balloons for $1 for a single balloon or 7 for a bouquet, and $5 for a bouquet with it if you have the ASB card. And this can be compared to $55 for a bouquet from ABC balloons. And um, two of our teams from Odyssey of the Mind just won at the competition. One of the teams got first place, and the other team got second place in the Outstanding Omer Award. Prestigious Outstanding Omer Award. <laughs> and then we also have our... Uh, girls basketball team is in the finals against Los Cerritos, so that is on Thursday, and we have a band concert also tonight. All right, thank you. All right, well now, uh, Aranza Sanchez Cruz from Westlake High School, please come up to the podium. Hi, good evening. My name is Aran Sanchez Cruz, and I'm the current junior class president at Westlake High School. So last month we had a winter rally and a winter formal dance, both of which were pretty successful and we're excited to have another one next year. And tonight is our Future Warrior Night where 8th graders from local middle schools can come over and learn about all the great classes and activities we have going on. And tomorrow our 10th graders are all gathering in the gym to have their KC High School exit exam and we wish them the best of luck. Thursday in the mezzanine, we have a meeting for all juniors and sophomores interested in being WOW counselors over the summer, which is where new coming freshmen can come and get used to the campus and make some new friends before they start the school year. On Friday, um, we're having a CATA day where some middle schools are coming over and having a leadership day with our ASG members, so that should be a lot of fun. And this month, we're happy to announce that we added nine more clubs to our collection of 70. And we are excited to get them started. So thank you very much, and have a nice day. Thank you. Uh, will Elizabeth Pumford from Thousand Oaks High School please come up to the podium now? Hi, I'm Elizabeth Pumford, and I'm the liaison representing TOHS. So we kick it off March with progress report distribution on the 2nd, and students will now be spending this week preparing for the SAT, which will be commencing at 8 a.m. on Saturday the 10th. And TOHS is one of the exam locations that's being offered. This Sunday, we're going to set our clocks for for daylight savings time, which is going to be super fun. And students will be taking the um, Cassie High School exit exam on the 13th and 14th but they can de-stress that Friday on the 16th as they show their class pride in the Somewhere in Time rally. The spirit continues on into the 17th as we celebrate St. Patrick's Day, and we can look forward to the 19th through the 23rd, which will be school-free holidays for spring break. Halfway through spring break, however, is the Ventura County Science Fair on the 21st, and the setup is going to be the Tuesday right before that. From the 26th to the 30th, we'll be conducting a measles incentive collection, and then we will wrap up the month with the TEDx Conejo um, presentations on the 31st in the Civic Arts Plaza. <laughs> Thank you, and I hope you'll have a great spring break. Thank you. Uh, will Genesis, Genesis Sandoval from Lorena High School please come up to the podium now? Good evening. My name is Genesis Sandoval, and I'm a junior and a liaison for Lorena High School today. Today, Lorena had their annual lip sync with the theme of movie soundtracks. In the lip sync, students of every grade must choose a movie soundtrack and perform it at the rally. 
A special shout out to our own Youth Commission's Gabriella Brignardello, who played the role of Danny Zuko in the motion picture Grease today at the rally. Great job, Gabriella. Tomorrow on the 8th, please join us for our next Circle of Friends Mass at 8.15 a.m. in the Lorena High School Chapel in Thousand Oaks. Celebrated by Father Henny, Mass is followed by friendly discussion, coffee, and sweets. All are welcome. On March 12th, St. Julie Billiards Church and Parish will be hosting the 7th grade retreat. This will be an all-day event from 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. in which the 7th grade will participate in activities of class unity and spiritual reflect reflection. Excuse me. Furthermore, on Friday the 16th, the application deadline for National Junior Honor Society will be due. Additionally, on the 16th, all registration for the 2012-2013 school year will be closed for all incoming freshmen and new students. On March 18th, the Lorena High School Alumni Association and the Parent Guild invite you and the special women in your life to join them at the Mother-Daughter Boutique and Luncheon. The boutique will feature top local vendors selling purses, jewelry, candles, accessories, clothing, and much more. Lunch will be provided by the Stonefire Grill and the cost is $20 per person. All proceeds go to benefit Lorena High School scholarship funds. The following Tuesday, the 20th, Lorena will be having our monthly Jeans Day. On Jeans Day, students bring in $1 in exchange for a free dress day. All the proceeds go to our schools and missions in Uganda. On Thursday, March 22nd, Lorena will participate in Youth Day. Youth Day is a religious education educational congress. All high school students are invited and many different backgrounds from throughout the archdiocese and beyond come together to participate in a morning mass, workshops, and liturgy. Last but not least, Lorena will be hosting its annual Renaissance Festival on the 30th. This year, Lorena will be receiving group workshops from professional actors on the Shakespearean arts. Rather than giving class performances, individual performers will come to the front of the school to recite Shakespearean soliloquies. For more information about Lorena High School, please visit www.lorena.com. Thank you. Thank you to all the uh, middle schools and high schools that attended tonight's meeting. And if you are, uh, if you'd like to send in any middle schools or high schools that weren't here tonight that want to send in any. Uh, representatives for the next meeting. Our next meeting will be on the first Wednesday of next month. So we look forward to seeing you there. And back to you, Chair, uh, Vice Chair Rose. Okay, thank you very much, Commissioner McGuigan. Um, throughout the course of the year, the Youth Commission undertakes many projects um, varying in topic. Um, we will now move on to section seven of our meeting, which is the project overview and discussion. I will call on various commissioners to discuss some events that happened in the past or will happen in the near future. So to start off, will Commissioner Brignardello please discuss the Youth Summit? Thank you. <clears throat> so the Youth Summit that was held on Saturday, February 25th was a great success. We filled the room with enthusiastic participants that were grades 7 through 12 and the community leaders that also came. So thank you to all that um, all of the students that attended and all of the community leaders that attended because you really helped make this such a fantastic event. Also, I would like to thank our amazing and inspirational uh, keynote speaker, Ms. Deidre Burnett, who is also Miss California and founder of the nonprofit organization Luggage of Love. So the four topics that were discussed at our, um, by our youth during the group breakout sessions uh, were environment, activities and recreation, drugs and alcohol, uh, and then bullying for the middle school and civic engagement for the high school. So I would now like to have my fellow commissioners uh, summarize each of their group discussions and the ideas and opinions that were brought up uh, really briefly. So I'll start with uh, Commissioner McGuigan, Jed McGuigan. Okay, so I had group number 10, which was composed of ninth graders from uh, different high schools throughout the county, uh, throughout the uh, throughout Thousand Oaks and Westlake. Uh, and the first uh, subject that we discussed was environment, and we thought that the uh, the recycling programs, specifically in our community, could definitely or throughout the city could definitely be uh, improved, and it could be based off the uh, recycling programs at the middle schools and high schools because we think those are very effective. And uh, what they could also do is they could also 
basically put recycling bins bins next to every trash can uh, throughout the city, and put like holes with ho like holes with like bottle the, uh, bottle cutouts to discourage people throwing trash trash away in them. And the next subject that we discussed was actually alcohol and drugs, and we thought that um, that some of the resource officers at the school are very nice, but can sometimes seem unapproachable to some of the students. And then we thought that peer aid could be uh, an alternative to uh, finding help for to discuss someone's addiction or just any problems that they have. And that also, and also, we thought that uh, the Dare program. I remember got canceled a year. Uh, actually, my year was the last year that they did dare at my elementary school, and I think that if they continue that, I think tackling, uh, you know, these or like um, discouraging drugs in earlier age is a lot more effective, and that also leads into bullying, which we discussed, which we also thought should be uh, discouraged earlier in uh, schooling, uh, like in elementary school, and like introduce no tolerance policies and. Uh, elementary schools especially and middle schools and high schools um, and then also provide peer uh, peer help for anyone who's being bullied and then a final um, topic was recreation we think and our, my group was uh, advocating for art programs in the community because they they love the Hillcrest theater I think it is but they um, they think that we could have maybe more of those and they, they love the Soaks Arts Plaza but they think that they target like an older group because of the prices and some of the acts um, and then the final thing was a uh, skate park they they uh, only had one skater in a group but a lot of them thought that a skate park would uh, keep kids uh, skating in prohibited areas and I think they just thought it would be a, a great addition to the community Oh, but overall, sorry, they were really pleased with the events and activities in TO, especially done by the Teen Center Library and many more organizations. Um, okay, uh, well, I led a very creative bunch of seventh graders, um, and some of their thoughts included a, uh, a public transport system um, that would provide a uh, bus that could pick up teens um, and take them to youth-related events um, for, you know, kids who don't have rides and things. Um, another had to do with a uh, extension to Borchard skate parks, um, and also arranging a, a schedule for bikers and skaters, children and teens. Um, that would just make the park uh, more safe and more approachable, and just a lot more fun for um, everyone. Um, and that could also tie in with um, you know school schedules, um, so it really wouldn't um, harm anyone's uh, skating or scooter time. Um, uh, also. Um, and uh, as uh, in relation to bullying, um, they all agreed that uh, anti-bullying clubs uh, or uh, peer aid um, uh, should be interest introduced um, into middle schools because they feel like some of the counselors are unapproachable. And providing a friend and someone to go to um, would be really beneficial. So that's about all. Thanks. Hello. So I was in charge of a group of 11th graders. And... Uh, in relation to parks and recreation, the group thought we needed to work at being more eco-friendly and taking greater steps towards conserving natural resources. So they suggested that the city use or fix broken sprinklers and use less water overall. And then members also, or yeah, members also thought that the city needs to improve on catering to the adolescent generation by having more activities available late at night. And so it was suggested to create a cafe house to hang out. Also, a big need in the community is addressing the drug and alcohol use among teens, and there are currently no steps being taken to educate youth about its dangers, and so we'd like to see that improved. Um, I led, or my name's Commissioner uh, Ramirez Davis, and I led a uh, group of uh, seniors, and mostly what we talked about was we pretty much hit the same topics as the other groups. Um, we really thought that um, Thousand Oaks Boulevard has a has a lot of um, potential to become something really great in the community, and we felt that it could have more of a State Street type feel, like um, Ventura has. And it's just if it's just kind of renovations that could help um, Thousand Oaks Boulevard become more uh, of a lively place and more of a family place. So that was one thing that came up. Another thing that came up was the creation of the Family Fun Center that is actually being talked about in. Um, uh, talked about in the oh I'm blanking the city council there we go and um, 
so that was another thing that came up and then one thing that did came up other like um was nightlife but not only nightlife for teens but also for adults because there were some uh some of the leaders that we were talking to were also saying yeah the city does kind of shut down around a certain time and you know if we're trying to go out to get something to eat or trying to go out and have fun somewhere there isn't really that many places that we can you know socialize as adults in the area so we can see how as kids there aren't that many places to socialize after um uh like nine or ten o'clock at night and um and that's mainly the points that we hit um in my group hi i'm commissioner Tito rescue and i led a group of middle schoolers and the two main topics we covered um, were bullying and activities we focused on the most. So for bullying, we decided that schools should have like an anonymous email service or chat room where kids can go to for advice when being bullied because going to a school counselor that might feel uncomfortable being face to face and in some situations it could only fuel the fire. So the anonymous chat room email service, um, kids would still get the advice they need, but it would all be anonymous and um, it would be a lot more comfortable. And for activities in the town, um, we definitely concluded that teens need more hangout options. So we thought maybe a cafe or club catering towards maybe high school and early college kids to uh, just hang out. Uh, there could be a stage for performances and just a social area pretty much and also for the local music scene um, we decided that opening a studio where local bands can play and record would be great for the community and having more concert venues I think would draw a lot more kids out and it'd be a fun place to socialize and listen to music and just hang out all right I led a group of 10th and 11th graders and it was very successful for the environmental section, there were a lot of pros at schools. There's always um, recycle bins around and there's earth clubs. But in the stadiums and around the town, there should be more recycle bins. Um, the civic engagement category, there, it's great because we have the teen center and all their leadership councils. And then we have the youth commission and the youth congress. So we thought that was great. Um, in the drugs and alcohol category, we felt that programs like D.A.R.E., they should start very early on, as in uh, elementary school, but they should also be um, stressed upon in middle school as well. And lastly, um, they, the com this committee was very pleased with the activities in the community. However, they would like more late night options. And lastly, for our sit down portion, we met with the firefighters, the library, and the school board. And we had a discussion about um, cyberbullying, how that needs to be targeted, um, and that there should be more cultural diversity, awareness, such as festivals or classes at schools to get kids more uh, in the know about what goes on in other places and people's cultures. So, thank you. Hi, I'm Commissioner Leone, and I led a group of 10th graders, and we concluded that as far as drugs and alcohol, that is definitely a very big issue that's within our teen community right now. So opening something like a dance club during nightlife might actually prevent kids from getting together on weekends because they have nothing else to do and resorting to drugs and alcohol. Um, also presentations showing the kids actually the long-term effects of these drugs and alcohol at schools would maybe um, educate the people who naively do it and don't necessarily know the consequences. Um, there needs to be more advertisement on our activities because the um, CVUSD, no, sorry, not CVUSD, um, Canoe Valley Park District and the Teen Center, they do offer a wide, wide range of activities. And when I brought up some of the activities they offered, actually some of the people in our group didn't even know that they were being offered. So the thing is, we have a lot of great activities. They just need to be pushed. And if people knew about them, then there would be more involvement in them. Um, recycling at schools um, to promote incentive for the kids to actually recycle, like class competitions or similar to Lorena's um, club called the Green Team or Newbury Parks Recycling Club. Um, things like that can help kids um, be more enthusiastic about recycling and helping out in our um, environment. So we look forward to seeing how we could implement these ideas and thoughts in our future youth commission. Thank you. Um, I'm Commissioner Stone, and I had a group, the second group of ninth graders. And since uh, my our main point for our group was they wanted to focus on, <coughs> excuse me, internships instead of volunteering, because these kids are about 15 years old. They uh, they've done enough volunteering. They actually like know what they want to do, like in a professional state. So 
Um, most companies don't offer internships or jobs until you're about 16 years old. So one of our main points was getting some kind of, not volunteering, but some kind of work experience for ninth graders or even younger than that who like know what they want to do. Our, for our recreation, uh, we did talk about the Teen Center a lot, and I, like uh, Commissioner Leone, I said, here are these programs, and they said, oh, we don't even know about these programs. So definitely publicizing that is one of our biggest deals. And they also said they want to include more high school and middle school interaction because almost every person in my group had an older brother or older sister who is in one of the public high schools and they said they would love to you know hang out with their friends and have their friends meet their like their friends and so they wanted a lot of more interaction between the two age groups um, for drugs and alcohol like we said before the dare program we feel should be coming back to the elementary schools and even the middle schools and peer counseling uh, peer counseling was a big topic that we hit so yeah thank you um, my name is Commissioner Boyajan, and the seventh graders from my group at the summit were very passionate, passionate about having a city bus line, more places to display art, and the Every 15 Minutes program that had taken place in the past at local high schools. They all felt that the Teen Center was a great way um, to meet new people and to interact with different schools, and they also loved the different sporting events and dances that they provide. And students feel that and the most efficient way for spreading awareness for drug use and um, for drug use awareness and bullying was through assemblies at their schools. And lastly, they suggested an anti-bullying week that could take place at high schools and middle schools um, that would just basically spread awareness of the effects of bullying and be able to help give people um, advice on how to handle situations when they're being bullied. Thank you. Hi, my name is Commissioner Brousseau. Uh, my group consisted of 6th and 7th graders. We discussed the drama and the volunteer programs at the local schools during the Leader Roundtable. And during the Youth Roundtable, we discussed the great activities that the Teen Center offers and that there should be more concert and plays in the community. Uh, we also discussed that while the tobacco bus of horrors and speakers are good ways that drug and alcohol rates are being lowered, um, that there should be more awareness programs and that a tip line could help. Uh, in terms of bullying, students recognized the Los Cerritos tip line and the peer service support team at Los Cerritos, but said that programs like the Anti-Bullying Society and the peer service support team should be spread to more schools in the community. And lastly, in terms of environment, my group said that people, because people are lazy and they're not out of recycling bins, uh, we should add more bins to schools and reward those who recycle. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of the summaries. Uh, as you can see, there was lots of good ideas that were brought up, and we're definitely going to uh, compile them all together and come up with a uh, uh, summary to present to City Council uh, so that we can hopefully implement all of these great ideas in the future. Uh, and just a reminder, um, if you did attend the Youth Summit and you like uh, contributing to what our city, what, what we're trying to do to uh, better the city for the youth, you can attend our youth implementation meetings, which are the second Wednesday of every month. So uh, the next one is next Wednesday. So hopefully I will see some other people there. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Brignadello and all the other commissioners for giving us a little taste of what happened at the Youth Summit. Um, we will now move on to Section 7B, um, which is the Teen Video Festival. Commissioner Leone, would you please enlighten us about the video festival? So we're continuing to accept applications for the video festival until May 9th. And um, we have our website, which is um, KanejoTeenVideoFestival.org. And um, if you have any questions, you could also com um, contact Pete Martinez at 805-494. 5156. So um, we're really trying to get our applications in as well as really push the environmental category um, because I'm not sure we have many um, entries for that yet and we are offering a scholarship for that um, category. So that is all. Perfect. Thank you, Commissioner Leone. Um, we will now move on to Section 7C. Commissioner Boyajan, would you please discuss the therapeutic dance? 
Yes, the therapeutic dance is a is a dance for people ages 13 and up who have special needs. And this year, the annual dance is coming up very soon. It is on March 31st, and the theme is totally tropical. We will be having um, fun dancing, entertainment, food, a photo booth, decorations, balloon drop, and much, much more. We encourage attendees to dress the theme. The food this year will be provided by Command Performance. And also, invitations are now available. This is what they look like. You can see. And um, if you have any questions, you can please email youthcommission at toaks.org or call 805-381-7362. And um, also call or email if you have any questions on how to get an invitation, um, if you would like to donate, or if you would like to dear at, volunteer at one of our work parties, which is March 10th, which is this Saturday, or the day of the actual dance. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Boyajian. Next, we move on to Section 7D. Commissioner Lee, would you please discuss the Youth Recognition Awards with us? Yes. The youth volunteers in the community make such an impact uh, to our city. And so they not only offer their time, but also their energy and skills and talents. And so what we do, the city organizes and has a the Youth Recognition Awards as a means of celebrating their contributions to the community. And so we recently extended the deadline to... Wednesday, April 4th, and we really need schools and organizations to send in applications, which are available at toaks.org slash youth. If you have any questions, you can call 805-381-7362. And we really, really need applications. So if you want to get someone to nominate you, show them the form and push, and we're really asking first for some applications. So check that out. Thank you. Commissioner Rose. Thank you, Commissioner Lee. We will now move on to Section 8. Um, before we adjourn the meeting, Commissioner... Hmm. Com Commissioner Sime, would you please introduce the Commissioner comments section of our meeting? Okay. This is the last portion of our meeting where commissioners can provide any information, comment, or announcement which no action by the commission will be taken. At this time, are there any commissioner comments? Commissioner Ramirez-Davis. Um, I just want to send my... Um Condolences to the Christian family. Uh, Dustin Christian, a um, senior at uh, the Continuation High School, uh, he died last night um, from a drug overdose. So um, just if you could have your prayers out to them, that'd be great. Commissioner Boyajian, or Bergnadale, excuse me. I would just like to announce uh, the Mikasa Angeles uh, third annual garage sale, which is uh, next Saturday. March 17th. So if you are looking for uh, cr uh, community service hours or you just want to come and stop by, uh, you can find us at 100 East Thousand Oaks Boulevard. It's right by the Denny's that's off of uh, Moore Park and Teo Boulevard. And it's uh, going to be a lot of fun. We have over 6,000 items uh, for sale at great prices, all starting at $1. And um, you can also volunteer. So let me know. Uh, you can uh, call 805-358-0002 if you're interested in volunteering or if you want just more information about the event. Thank you so much. Commissioner Brousseau. Um, okay, I have three quick things. Um, first of all, uh, we really like to promote the Conejo Teen Video Festival. And if you'd like more information, you can also visit ConejoTeenVideoFestival.org. Um, while you're on the web, you can go to Facebook and like our Facebook page, uh, type in Youth Commission at the top, and like our Facebook page, um, and you'll get updates on what the Youth Commission is doing. And lastly, as Commissioner Brignardello said, uh, we host youth implementation meetings, which are the second m Wednesday of the month in the community room of the Thousand Oaks Library at 6 p.m. So please come out and join us and help us make a difference in the community. Thank you. Commissioner Leone. Just wanted to say that our Newbury Park High School talent show will be this Friday, so if you want to come and support our school as well as our sophomore class fundraiser and buying roses for the participants, then that'd be appreciated. Commissioner Sklavenitis. I would like to wish good luck to all those participating in the track and field um, meet tomorrow against Birmingham from Westlake High School, so good luck to Westlake. And if anyone is looking to buy some Girl Scout cookies, Troop 60799 will be selling outside of uh, the Breakfast Cafe located at 686 Lindero Canyon Road on Sunday from 10 to 2 p.m. Thank you. Commissioner George McGuigan. Um, so if you're interested in setting up an abs club, um, 
uh, Anti-Bullying Society um, at your school, um, please contact me at uh, youthcommission.tox.org, and I will hap uh, be happy to forward you a standard middle school club constitution. Um, yeah, thanks, and remember, we're still looking for new members, uh, so be happy to attend the next implementation plan meeting, which is the 14th of March, next Wednesday. So that's it. Okay, uh, there being no more commissioner comments, back to Vice Chair Rose. Thank you, Commissioner Stein. Um, before I adjourn the meeting, I would just like to stress, um, if you have not liked our Facebook page, please do so at www.facebook.com forward slash Thousand Oaks Youth Commission. Um, we have a lot of information on there, and we have some pictures from our past events that you guys can check out. If you went to the event, you'll see some pictures of yourself there. Um, it's a really great way to stay in the know about what's going on at the youth, in the Youth Commission, um, so I highly recommend you do that. Other than that, I think every other commissioner covered everything, which was fantastic. So if you would like any other information about the Youth Commission um, or have questions about the agenda items discussed, please call us at 805-381-7362 or email us at youthcommission at toaks.org. There being no further information to come before the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission, this meeting is adjourned at 7.20 until our next televised meeting on April 4th, 2012.